The people of Myanmar mark the traditional New Year of Thinian this week, but the mood has been far from festive since the military coup. We look at the cost of defending democracy, from the protesters who risk it all, to the families who have lost their loved ones, and to those who seek a better way. On February 1st, Myanmar's young democracy came to an abrupt halt. Peaceful demonstrations against the military coup soon turned bloody. But that has not deterred protesters. Early March saw the first mass bloodshed. And later that month, the bloodiest day of protest on Armed Forces Day. More than 100 were killed. The death toll continues to rise. The majority of the anti-coup protesters are students and youths. They have put their lives on the line in their fight to defend democracy. In early March, some 400 student protesters were rounded up by the police in Tamwe Township in Yangon. This was the largest mass arrest since the military coup in February. It's believed thousands of demonstrators are still being detained. In late March, the military freed some 600 protesters. Days later, another 300 were released. Some of them told CNA about their experience. The Three Finger Salute, made popular by the Hunger Games film trilogy, has become a symbol of anti military resistance. But not everyone is raising their hands in solidarity. There are those who choose not to participate in demonstrations, wary of being targeted by authorities. They are not willing to uh, join this conversation because they are scared that if the information leaks, then they will be labelled as traitors. <laughs> I am one of those who want, who want it to be solved peacefully on tables, not on the streets. Because if more people think like us and choose to stay home, the situation would not have worsened to such stage. 
I think it's pointless. Uh, you know, you just uh, sacrifice and risking uh, innocent lives because if you go out, you will die. You know, they're gonna shoot. They already say they're gonna shoot. Every time someone my age die, uh, instead of thinking it could have been me, I thought, what if it was my friend? Uh, what if it was my boyfriend? What if it was my uh, siblings, my cousins? Like many other young people in Myanmar, she has thrown herself deeper into activism since the coup. After all, her grandfather and father had taken part in the 1962 and 1988 revolutions. But the security forces cracked down this time has changed her father's mind. He has grounded her out of concern for her safety. I felt angry. I still feel angry because my, my friends, even people younger than me, are out there. So I said, everyone's going out. What's the big deal? So we had a lot of arguments until now. Despite the dangers, their parents were supportive of their children's decision to defend democracy. But for other parents, that time to offer advice has gone. When CNA correspondent returns, we speak with the families of those killed during the protests. Min Min remembering her son, Peto. He had difficulty walking, a result of suffering from polio. Peter was 39 when he died in March. โอ้ประมาณว่าเราก็ว่ามาได้ลูกท่านน่ะบ่ได้งาตางาสกานามาทางมูงาตางาสกานามาทางลูกอู้ลูกผิดตาสรุปว่าอยู่ตรงไม่
Some of the casualties have been much younger. In late March, seven-year-old Kim Yo Chit was shot when police raided the house in Mandalay. Dr. A Nian Tu was the first emergency responder on the scene. The doctor performed cardiopulmonary resuscitation on the girl in the ambulance. Kin Myo Chit did not survive. In the weeks after Kim Yo Chit's death, there were more reports of children among the fatalities, prompting widespread outrage. The military denies the killings, saying there's no evidence that children were targeted. The military has even suggested that some were paid to carry weapons. Since the coup, many people have been trying to push out information, news, photos and videos out of the country. A large bulk of it apparently shows brutality and lethal violence on the part of the security forces. But there have also been cases where I'm told that police officers had argued among themselves, urging them not to shoot at protesters and giving them time to clear out. That said, these accounts are still hard to independently verify. Myanmar's army chief maintains the military had no choice but to seize power. It has claimed widespread election fraud in a vote last November that Aung San Suu Kyi and the National League for Democracy won by a landslide. The NLD and the Election Commission have said the allegations are groundless. Myanmar faces a protracted crisis with no clear solution ahead. But one thing is certain for now, neither the military nor the protesters are backing down. New York is home to one of the largest Myanmar communities in the United States. We find out how young activists there are showing support for their countrymen back home when CNA correspondent returns. Through prayer, song, and chanting, protesters in New York are defiant in their calls for an end to the military coup in Myanmar, some 13,000 kilometers away. It breaks my heart when I see my colleagues, my friends out there in Myanmar, they go on a protest with the, with, with the risk of being shot in the crackdowns. So I want to take my part in supporting the CRPH. May only wants to be identified by her first name for fear of retribution for loved ones back home in Myanmar. She's one of several hundred protesters who have gathered in Times Square in the heart of Manhattan in New York City, known as the crossroads of the world. Activists hope holding regular demonstrations like this can help reach a broader audience. America is the most powerful country for the democracy, right? That's why we, wanna, we want more Americans to take part in our democracy fight. It's a fight that Nadine Yet knows well. He says he spent 15 years in a Myanmar prison in the wake of the 1988 uprising. 
He's now been in the US for more than 12 years, but the fight for democracy back home continues. We need to, to know international community and then United Nations, United States government or all national leaders yeah, to support our, our people and to support our, our new government. That's why we have to do here in, in Times Square and uh, we need to show, uh, our, 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 our show the help to the community. But that show of support isn't just taking place through in-person protests. Well, demonstrators here hope events like this can have an impact. The majority of work in New York to help protesters in Myanmar is taking place online. John Tong translates financial documents in an effort to expose alleged financial foul play in companies controlled by the Myanmar military. He says it's important to take advantage of the freedoms he has in the US to help inform his fellow countrymen, especially as internet access there is being restricted. Especially in the rural area, they don't have internet access anymore. They have been relying on SMS text messages. So what I'm trying to do is I have a lot of friends back home in Yango. I am going to email them because they also have internet access because they have fiber internet. And what I'm going to tell is I'm going to write out maybe 45 pages of document. They're going to print it and they're just going to like, you know, uh, do peer to peer sharing. Before the military seized power on February 1st, Yun Yati Nai was focused on her studies and working at the family business. They opened this cafe and grocery store in New York's Jackson Heights neighborhood last year, and Yun helps out with advertising and preparing traditional cuisine five days a week. Until recently, she wasn't involved in politics, but events over the past few months have turned her into a self-described keyboard fighter. Yun has helped organize some in-person protests, but much of her focus is on translating content coming out of the protests in Myanmar and sharing it on social media for English-speaking audiences. The only difference between 1988 and 20, 2021 is our generation. And what we have, the only tool that our generation have is technology. Not the, that's the only difference from 1988. So using technology and social media is the only is the only uh, is the only let weapon that we have, you know, and that is the only weapon not just to fight against them, but to but to um, have the world back us up because we cannot fight this alone. Mo Chan is the executive director of Burma Point, a Myanmar advocacy group helping his fellow compatriots both in New York and back in Myanmar. Working with people across the US, Chan helped create the website Myanmar Criminals to track attacks on protesters with the goal of ensuring that there will be repercussions for those responsible. Accountability is the key. The key. As long as they are, they realize one day, sooner or later, that they are accountable. And we make sure that they are accountable for what they have done to those innocent people. And human rights activists believe keyboard fighters can play a helpful role in supporting protesters in Myanmar. They can amplify those voices, and I think that's a positive thing. You know, they, they can be a, a means of amplifying the voices of people on the ground inside their, their home country and getting it to the attention of other, of other people. And I think it just makes it harder for, you know, governments around the world to turn a blind eye and just hope that everything kind of goes okay. Whether it's online or in person, members of the Myanmar community in New York are hoping to pressure the United Nations to do more. Here at the UN headquarters in New York, the Security Council has met three times since February 1st to discuss the situation in Myanmar. Last month, council members condemned violence against protesters, but many activists want to see more than words. Western nations have threatened further sanctions on the military, but China has called for calm and restraint from all parties, warning that sanctions will only aggravate tensions. The United Kingdom's UN ambassador says the Security Council should play its part in a firm and unified international response. We'll continue to discuss next steps. Uh, we have a range of uh, measures at our disposal, um, but the 
main thing is to make sure that we can see uh, the end of violence, the release of those arbitrarily detained, uh, and the restoration of Myanmar on the path back to uh, democracy and stability. Speaking exclusively to CNA last month, Myanmar's UN ambassador called on the Security Council, regional players and the international community at large to play a role. You look at uh, those who kill during the protests, they are the, they are the young people. So we, they, those young people, they are our future. The young generation, they are our future. So we need to protect them. So when we need to protect them, if we cannot do by ourselves, we need to get the, uh, the help from the international community. Some young activists here in New York say they're working to ensure that the stories of those killed in Myanmar are told and don't become mere statistics brushed off by world leaders and populations around the world. We wake up every day to this news and it's, 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 we cry to sleep, we wake up and we, and we cry. It's, 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 it needs to end and it can only end if we get the internet com international community to speak up. And with internet access being cut off in Myanmar, activists here say it's vital for them to step up and be a mouthpiece for demonstrators risking their lives back home.